Today we will be making a high resolution DIY spectrometer. Design and components. As you can see, the general design of the spectrometer is actually pretty simple. It is composed by an optical input, an entrance slit, a diffraction gradient, a focusing lens and a DSLR camera. Now let's see each individual component. This is the optical input, which as you can see is just a small gate which allows the light to enter the spectrometer. Additional accessories such as a fiber optic cable can be attached to it. Behind the optical input we have the entrance slit. This device somehow focuses the light entering the spectrometer in a very small region towards the diffraction gradient. This is indeed a key component and helps improving the total resolution. Alright, now let's move on to the diffraction gradient. As diffraction gradient, I'm using a regular DVD. Obviously, a professional diffraction gradient will also work, but it turns out that a DVD works just fine. And finally, as focusing lens, I'm using an old 28-20mm Canon lens, which focuses the light towards the CCD detector of the camera. And as detector, I'm using a Rebel D3 Canon camera. The main components of the spectrometer are held in place by a set of screws. The spectrometer can be operated in two main modes. In the roll mode, no additional accessories are attached to the optical input. Additionally, an entrance slit is placed between the optical input and the diffraction gradient, and the use of a diffuser screen is highly recommended. On the other hand, when working in the SMA mode, the entrance slit is removed from the spectrometer. Additionally, the SMA connector is attached to the optical input, where a standard fiber optic cable can be connected. Usually, the SMA mode provides higher resolution but lower signal intensity. Data acquisition The data is directly acquired using the display of the DSLR camera. The acquisition time and the ISO values are selected depending on the sample to be analyzed. The spectrometer can be calibrated using a wide variety of light sources. In my case, I will use a combination of a neon flickering lamp and a compact fluorescent light bulb. These sources are ideal since they produce a very well-defined spectra. Here you can see an example of the neon spectrum taken directly with the spectrometer. As you can see, the spectrum is composed by a set of very well-defined lines, which are ideal for calibration. The data is loaded as an image file using the tracker physics software. Then a linear profile analysis is performed. In this case, I've loaded the data corresponding to the neon lamp, and as you can see, we have obtained a really nice spectrum. And now the data corresponding to the compact fluorescent light bulb is loaded. Once again, the final spectrum can be obtained by means of a linear profile analysis of the data. Using this spectra, the following calibration curve can be easily obtained. As you can see, there is almost an ideal linear dependence between the wavelength and the pixel position. Once the calibration curve is obtained, it can be directly loaded into the software. Alright, now let's have a look at some examples. Here we have the spectrum of a fluorescent light bulb. In the spectrum, we can see the lines corresponding mainly to mercury, europium and terbium. Now let's move on to neon. As we can see, the spectrum is actually pretty nice, and it is composed by a huge amount of very well-defined lines. Indeed, let's compare its individual peak with a set of reference data. As you can see, the experimental data is in well agreement with the reference one. Now, let's move on to a high-pressure sodium lamp. Once again, here we have a really nice spectrum, so in very discreet and well-defined lines. In this case, the most characteristic peak 
is actually the 589 nanometer one corresponding to the sodium atom. However, it's worth to mention that in this case, this peak is not actually a maximum, but is a minimum, which therefore means that the light is actually being absorbed. This effect is actually known as self-absorption, and it is caused when the cooler sodium atoms, which are actually in ground state, absorb the 589 nanometer photons emitted by the plasma, getting uh, excited to higher electronic states, and therefore creating actually an absorption band within the emission spectra. However, other effects, such as the Doppler effect, are involved within this process, which leads to a significant band broadening. And finally, here we have the solar spectrum. And as we can see, the Fraunhofer lines are clearly visible. Actually, for me, this spectrum is pretty awesome, as it provides a lot of information about the composition of the sun. But actually, I will not enter in further detail, as uh, I will probably make a future video about this. Alright, so up to this point, we have finally obtained a fully functional DIY high resolution spectrometer. However, further work can be made through the development of different units which can be coupled to the spectrometer. Although it is still in current development, I want to show you one of these examples. This is a UV visible spectrophotometer unit which can be fully coupled to the spectrometer. It contains a tungsten light bulb which can be powered by regular batteries. This would provide a continuous light source for the spectrometer. The qubit containing the sample is placed in the qubit holder, and the fiber optic cable is attached to the unit, which is at the same time attached to the spectrometer. The working principles will be pretty simple. The spectra of the blank solution and the sample solution are taken and then they are subtracted, which should give us the absorption spectrum of the sample. However, we will see this in detail in a future video. So to conclude, we have finally made a DIY high resolution spectrometer for a total budget of 187 euros. I hope you found useful this project. Additionally, if you are planning on improving or producing this work, I will highly recommend you to download the PDF file shown in the description. Finally, for any questions or suggestions, contact me by email or Twitter. Thanks for watching.